We're going to look at three different examples of interest and from the last video we looked at compound interest in which, from which we derived the formula um, which was F, the final amount you have is the initial amount you put in times 1 plus the interest rate to the nth power where n is the period of time. Um, so we're actually going to, before we move on, we're going to look at a simpler version of this um, and see how the math changes there. So remember from our first example we used a thousand bucks put into a bank with 50% interest rate, which is ridiculous, um, but it helps for our purposes of doing simple math. Um, remember after one year, when n equals one, uh, the bank took p, multiplied it by i, uh, gave you an extra 500 bucks, and added it up to the pot. So then at the end of the first compounded round, you have 1,500 um, bucks. From there, we use this as a new starting point when we did compound interest. Um, the big difference in simple interest is that um, your, your investment is always related to P, the original 1,000 bucks, so that this value doesn't matter at all, really. So instead of um, using 1,500 as your starting point for N equals 2, you're going to use 1,000 again. So all you're really going to do is take P times I again, which is 1,000 times 0.5. You get another 500 bucks at the end of round two, and you add that here. So that at the end of round two, you have 200 bucks. If you can recall from compounded interest, we used this and divided that by two, um, and got 750, added that together. So we had 2,750 at the end of compounded interest round two, uh, versus um, 2,000 for simple interest round two. So in this exaggerated example uh, with a ridiculous interest, uh, after two years there's a huge difference in terms of the money you get. Uh, with compound you get $750 more than simple. So obviously you can think of simple interest as in uh, in the interest, no pun intended, of the bank and not you. Um, so let's derive a formula here um, which differs from the compound interest formula which I'll write down again. Um, F equals P times 1 plus N to the nth power. So that's compounded. So now let's think of simple and how we derive that. Well, let's think about that. Thousand bucks. After the first round, you get 500 bucks. And in terms of uh, expression, it was P times I, 1,000 times 0.5. After the second round, you get 500 bucks again, as, we, as we've just described. So you're just going to add another P times I to that. And another one. And another one. This is after four rounds. So what is this? This is just P plus P I N, N being the number of periods. And you could write that more simply to match that. and this equals F. So let's write this in very stark contrast to each other. Whereas in compounded interest you have an exponent term, here it's all still multiplication. P1 plus IN. And always keep in mind this is going to be bigger than this in terms of your final value. Now let's look at one more very quickly and that's discounting. Um, let's look back at this. You wanted uh, to know the final amount of money you had after doing an investment. Well, what if you know what you want to get and you want to know how much you should put in the, in the bank uh, a set amount of time uh, in the past? Um, well, if we want to rearrange for P, then you just divide this over to the under, to under F. I'm sorry, I wrote this wrong. This is I. Sorry about that. So you see these are the same expression, but here you care about the end result. Um, here you care about the initial result. And this is good if you'd like to say, well, in 10 years I want a thousand bucks, and how much should I put in the bank now so that as that value accrues over time, I'll have a thousand bucks. So you see how that's different from here where we put a thousand bucks and we got more than a thousand bucks. Here we're going to put less than a thousand bucks and get a thousand bucks. So if you want to do the math, uh, in this case, uh, put a thousand bucks in, Let's say the interest rate is 6%, so your i is going to be 0 
because you want to write it not as percentage but as divided by 100%. Uh, let's say you want to do it over 10 years. That F is going to equal 1,700, about that much. I'm not doing that in my head, don't worry. Um, so you make 790 bucks in 10 years, which is not bad um, for, for that low of an interest. Um, now for discounted, we want 1,000 bucks in 10 years, so how do we write that? 1,000 at the top, 1 plus 0 0.06 to the tenth power, uh, it's going to be about 558 bucks. So you understand why these are different. Here you put in a thousand, you compounded it and got more. Here you put in a smaller amount to get to a thousand. And both, these are just different strategies depending on what you as a company or as, a, as an individual wants to get out of the whole interest scheme. Um, always remember that discount, you're going to have less value, less than F. Um, and for compounding, you're going to reach a value greater than P.